G'day there, you're watching the Aussie Bibbin Guru, and today I've got a quick video where we're going to demonstrate an interesting workflow or pair of workflows and where we're looking at getting test fit data into Revit using Dynamo. So we're going to be looking at two approaches. So test fit to Revit. So previously I've already reviewed and demonstrated test fit about two months ago on the channel. So be sure to check this out if you're not aware of the program and what it can do. Um, it has developed quite a lot since then, so I probably will cover some additional features that have come in since then as well. Um, but as promised, I did mention in this video that I was going to show you some ways that you can use Dynamo to bring test fit uh, elements in as Revit elements like walls and floors. Um, the files for this presentation will be on GitHub because I'm not going to build the entire script from start to finish because it is quite a long script um, with lots of repetitive nodes to create the outcome. So I'm, instead, I'm going to demonstrate the script and just sort of talk through the logic of how I've used the test fit data in Dynamo instead. So um, I'd like to thank again TestFit um, for giving access to this, this amazing product. I think it's got a really bright future and it's really great to see it develop and to see the passion of the team as well. So keep up the great work. Um, but in this video, I'm going to start just by touching on one workflow, which is TestFit and Topologic. And I'll talk about Topologic briefly. Uh, I'm then just going to just point out a couple of new features that I've noticed that have come into TestFit since I did my demonstration. Now, there's probably a lot more than what I'll point out. But these are just the ones that I guess stood out to me. Um, I'm then just going to show you how you can generate the RSD file for TestFit and some other options for how you can export TestFit data. And then we're just going to look at a Dynamo based workflow and how you can achieve the same result. So TestFit to Topologic is definitely worth mentioning. Um, so if you haven't seen the Topologic package, um, definitely check it out and check out the work of Wasim Yabi. Um, he shares a lot of his outcomes on LinkedIn and Twitter, but he's exploring the possibility of turning a test fit model into what's called a cell cluster, which is essentially a collection of spaces that have well, spaces, solids that have a lot more information embedded in them. Um, and they can do very interesting things with this data, such as understand their adjacencies. So an apartment knows which balcony belongs to it, for example, or a corridor knows which apartments it has a door that would go to without needing to model a door or put this data into a 3D model. So it's a very interesting um, approach. And I think that this might be one of the keys to unlocking this shortcut between Revit and Topologic and also TestFit and other platforms as well in future. Um, so definitely, if you're interested in seeing more on this, definitely jump over to the Topologic website to their learning page. And there's a set of, uh, a set of uh, demonstration nodes, uh, I think under TestFit to Topologic workflow. Um, you can just download them as a zip. And if you installed the Topologic Dynamo package, um, they should work as they come. So I might quickly just jump in and demonstrate that first. So in this case, I'm just using the sample file that um, Wasim has provided. Um, and it, it pretty much generates a, a cell cluster um, that contains information by department. And you can obtain a lot more information from this using the Topologic workflows. So we obtain an RSD file, which is the native test fit format. Um, and there's a special workflow that, uh, that they've developed in order to generate a, a cluster from an RSD file. And from here, he's using a dictionary in order to obtain some information and store it um, parallel to these, these, these elements. And then getting the names, you can see that you can, you can isolate the names of these spaces, whether they're balconies, lifts, stairs. And this is obviously all in parallel to the geometry as well. So you can filter elements and you can do more meaningful things with them as well. And then in this case, it's just, um, he's just coloring them based on, on I think their, their ID in this case. So the ID must determine the, uh, uh, the, the name of the space. Um, so there's definitely potential for what this workflow can do. My workflow is gonna be a little bit more simple and it's gonna have some issues that I will point out that do need to be ironed out in future, but maybe Topologic might be the solution to these problems. Um, definitely contact TestFit if you want to see more of their product as well. Um, they're growing pretty fast and they do have a lot of clients um, in development and also architecture. Um, so definitely reach out. But let's just jump into um, the actual Revit, uh, Revit to Dynamo workflow um, from TestFit. I might just jump into TestFit first because I'm going to be using this, uh, this model um, for our test that I've just set up in TestFit very quickly. Now immediately you can notice one new feature in TestFit uh, that's come in since, which is that there's now 
a parapet um, that can be added into the model, um, which I guess visually just makes the building look a little bit more um, complete because a lot of these buildings have, have parapets on them or they have a roof on them. Um, I assume in the future maybe there'll be a roof tool as well, I'm not sure, but I know a lot of buildings, they just cap them off with a parapet. And you of course have, you have a control um, down on the building to change your parapet or just turn it off as well. Um, I've also noticed too the spaces have a lot more control. Um, one feature is that you can now put the spaces inside the garage space, which is pretty handy. And I don't believe I saw the merge levels tool before, which I assume um, makes like double or triple height spaces um, for things like double height lobbies, which is pretty cool if that's the intent. Um, so that's pretty neat as well. Um, I did notice as well there was a podium level control. Um, I think that was under the building settings. Now I couldn't get the podium levels to work with the wrap levels on top if there was more than one wrap level, but I'm probably doing something wrong. Um, but in this case, it would be great to see that we do have individual control over the podium of the building uh, versus the apartment levels, which is obviously usually how this works. Um, I also did notice one thing too, if you go into the unit configurator, Customize units. I'll put my sound settings on, um, you, you can add a background underlay to the apartments. So if you find that the apartments aren't looking detailed enough and you have a layout that matches the size of the apartment, you can put it underneath and create quite a detailed looking test fit plan, um, which might give architects a bit more confidence in what they're looking at if they're not familiar with how test fit works. So they feel like they're at least looking at a floor plan where they can start disseminating the logic of how the plan goes together. Um, there's probably more features that have come in since. Um, they were some of the ones that I guess I noticed um, pretty quickly um, compared to when I was in test fit last time. Um, but obviously it, the program is still developing um, and changing as we go and it looks like it's doing really well. Now I'm just in 3D at the moment. I've obviously got my plan as well. So I've got the parking. Um, the parking actually has a lot of changes too. So there's a lot more control over the car park now. You can move it around the building to wherever you want um, and you can change settings about the ramping and the, the stall widths and there's a lot of things that have changed in the parking settings too. So definitely check that out even if you're just looking at designing car parks because you also have some um, you have some options for the way the car park is set out as well. So this most of these parking settings I believe are new um, but you can change the, the type of the parking layout and you can do on-ground parking um, so pretty cool. Anyway, uh, I'm going to be working with the RSD file. Now you don't have to export TestFit to RSD, you just save it and it's it's saved as that native format. Export data. Um, you can actually save you can as export all different the formats you want to. as well. Um, so for example, you can actually export to things like DXF and SKP for SketchUp um, or CSV files. So there's a lot of ways that you can process your data in other programs, not just Revit. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to be using the RSD file and Dynamo is going to do the heavy lifting for me. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to jump into Dynamo um, in Revit. I'm going to make a, a new project. Uh, I think I already have made a new project. I'm just using the Autodesk default template. Uh, but one thing I have done that's quite important is I have set my project units to meters. So you will want to do that as well. And in this case, I'm just going to open up my testing script. Um, I'm set to manual mode, so I'm not running straight away because I sort of want to run down the logic of what's happening um, as we go. So what I might do is just close my properties and my view for browser palette and just go to a 3D view so that you can see what's happening. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete level one and I'm going to rename, uh, I might need my properties browser back actually. I'm going to rename ground floor to datum because I'm going to be creating um, a new a new ground floor essentially and I'm just not going to rename the views. Okay, so let's have a look at what we're doing here. So the first thing I want to point out is I will be using the test fit package. Um, so if you go to packages and you search for a package, just sort by name and once it loads, um, if you search for test fit, it should be the only package that comes up, I believe. There we go, test fit dynamo. It's been updated quite recently as well, um, 17th of July. And if you like what you see, give them a thumbs up. <laughs> like I just did. Um, okay, so currently I'm just sitting with nothing in the model. So the first thing I need to do is go and point to my RSD file. So in this case, I'm just going to go and point to my test fit file. And the great thing about this is obviously you can change your test fit design and you can rerun the script and regenerate all these elements. Because we're going to generate floors, um, holes in the floors and all the walls in the building. So now we use this node called building by RSD file. This is from the test fit package. 
and then we break it into what's called parts. And this essentially breaks the RSD file into its respective pieces ready to be uh, filtered. Um, what I might do is just expand this a little bit. Um, I'm also using the building.levels node from the test fit package. And all this does is obtains uh, the levels, uh, the elevations the levels occur at. Now I might just go and probably freeze a couple of nodes. So I'm gonna freeze my floor generation node and I'm also gonna freeze uh, my opening shaft and also my wall generation and my final wall generation. But everything else I can probably run at the moment and just run through what's happening. So I'm going to run. So what I have currently is I have the heights coming out of test fit. Um, so these are the heights of the building. Now this doesn't include the roof. Um, so I have had to do a workaround to include the roof. What I'm doing now is just taking my levels um, and I'm rounding them off to two decimal places because some of those numbers come out like almost at a, at a whole number, but not quite. Um, and I'm also counting the number of levels I have because I'm going to build a range to name all my levels. So in this case, I'm going from one up to the, the count of the levels to generate level plus that number. So level one, level two, level three, etc. And then determining uh, the height between the, the last item in the list and the second to last item. And in this case, I'm just comparing this uh, so that I can tell what the last elevation of the level was before the roof level. So I can just add another level on top called roof. Now in this case, I'm using a custom node uh, from my package, uh, Crumple, which you can obtain from my GitHub. Um, but essentially all this node is, is just a combination of generating a level and using a set parameter by name because I couldn't find a level by elevation and name. So it's quite annoying having to go and add a set parameter by name node every time you wanna create a new level. So in this case, it allows you to have an elevation and a name. So in this case, we're generating levels based on these elevations that we obtained from TestFit, and then we're assigning the name to that level that's just been created as well. And likewise, I'm also creating a roof level separately. So what I'm doing with these, um, first of all, I'm actually going and obtaining a few parts from this parts by building node. So in this case, I'm obtaining the internal plates, um, which is the courtyard edges um, or the courtyard floor edges. And then I'm also obtaining external plates, which is the outside of the building. And this does include the balcony as well. So if I go and just turn on my preview, you can see here roughly that's what we're, what we're dealing with. We've got our external plates and our internal plates. I'll just turn off our preview for now. And in this case, I'm also uh, taking uh, the last external plate and I'm offsetting it by the distance between the last level and the roof. Um, this is so we can use this outline to generate a roof slab as well. Now in future, maybe they'll add a node so that you can add the last level because the problem with the roof slab being the level before it is that the balconies are included. So that's not really ideal because I guess the balconies shouldn't occur on the roof. Uh, maybe like the parapet edge might be useful to have in future um, so that we can generate that last roof slab um, accurately. But what I'm doing is just taking this and I'm adding it on the end of the other levels so I can generate that floor. I've then got a floor type and I'm also adding in this case uh, just my roof level uh, to the end of my other levels. And this is because I'm gonna generate floors by outline, type and level. So my outline curves are in this case, those external plate curves and my floor type is whatever I want it to be. And then my levels. So if I unfreeze this, we'll just do our first step. I mean, technically we've already done our first step, which is to create levels. Uh, that's already been done. Now we're generating floors. So I'll run and this should generate a set of floors. So these are coming in from test fit. Now there's occasionally like little anomalies like this that I have found um, that come in usually from, I guess, slivers in the, in the floor profile. Um, but for the most part, it comes in pretty well. So it comes in pretty whole. So we can see at the moment that we have, um, in this case, I think it's six levels. Um, so we've got one, two, yeah, five floor levels on the roof. Um, so in this case, we do need to add some holes to the slab. Now, if anyone's used Dynamo before with floor creation, you'll know that you can't create internal loops inside floors. And this is because it's not possible in the Revit API to currently do this. The way around this is to use a floor opening in this case. So I have got a custom node from the Springs package um, that we're gonna be targeting, which is the opening shaft by curves. Now you can do floor hosted openings. In this case, I'm just gonna generate a shaft so that I can generate it from the bottom to the top in one element. This way you don't have to maintain the position of that hole in the floor constantly. 
Um, now this probably isn't a suitable uh, workflow for proceeding to like a documentation level. At that point, I would say it's good to get the users to go in and actually add that internal outline to the floors manually. But for an early stage where you're just trying to get a concept into Revit, this might be okay. So in this case, I'm generating opening shafts by curves and I'm getting the curves from the poly curves um, of the first external floor plate. So I'm calling on the external plate at in an index of zero in this case. Now I am having to do a chop in this case because when we get our external plates and our internal plates, we should have one external plate per floor, which is good, but our internal plates, may, there may be multiples of them and they're not broken up by level at this point. So at the moment we actually have two internal plates per floor. So we do need to isolate just those lowest two internal plates. So what I do with this element is I just go and chop my list because I know that the internal plates occur in vertical hierarchy. That's just the way test fit outputs them. So I'm counting the number of levels in my building and the number of internal plates. And I'm finding out for each level how many internal plates there are. So I'm dividing those two numbers and I'm chopping my internal plates by that distance. So it should determine in this case that there are two times the number of internal plates as they are floors. So it'll give us the first two by chopping them. So we take those two internal plates. I'm taking my first level and my last level in this case, I don't actually need this last level. So I'm gonna use my roof level instead. And I'm getting all the individual curves from that poly curve, um, because in this case, this the opening expects a curve, um, a set of curves, not a single poly curve. So we do have to sort of do that like explode on them. I've then got my base level, which I'm just calling on as the first level in my list of levels. And then I'm taking my top level, which in this case, I'm going back and getting my roof that I generated separately. So if I unfreeze this node and I run, we should also now get the internal openings as a shaft. And you can see now that they're, they're two individual shafts, um, but they are going from the, the bottom or the ground all the way through the roof, um, which is pretty much what we want. So we've already got pretty much our floors coming in from test fit to Dynamo, so that's already pretty cool. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is generate my shaft walls. So this is my lift and my stair walls. So in this case, I'm, I'm going and generating the parts for the lift walls and the stair walls. So if I just turn on the preview for them, you can see in Revit roughly where they're gonna come in as well. You can see the, the preview, but in, in Dynamo, you can also see those outlines. And note that if they do share walls, they won't get like a double line. Like I think the stair owns the wall if it's adjacent to a lift. Um, so in this case, we can just combine these two together. So in this case, I'm just combining them in a list. I'm flattening that list so that all those curves occur at the same level. I'm then taking the start point of each of those curves and checking which ones occur at a Z value of zero, because I don't want to get a curve at every floor. I'm going to generate a full height uh, core and stair wall for each core and stair. So I'm just isolating them using a filter by Boolean mask. So in this case, my in list should represent just the curves that are sitting at the ground. And we should be filtering out all the other curves. In this case, I'm taking these curves and I'm using them as a wall by curve and levels. And this allows me to set a start level and an end level. So I'm going back and getting that lower level and then my roof level and then just setting a wall type. Now it's really important to note that at the moment, this is gonna generate the walls by center line. So this isn't ideal. Ideally, you'd wanna use finished face exterior. Um, now the reason I haven't went to that point of generating a finished face exterior wall is because the propagation of the curves coming out of test fit isn't necessarily always inward facing. Um, so it's a bit of a problem. Um, you'll see it, especially when you're looking at things like balconies. Um, the, the, the problem is that obviously you're always gonna draw a finished face exterior wall with the normal pointing away from the curve in a consistent direction based on the draw direction of the curve. Now at the moment, that's not possible. So what you'd need to do if you wanted to generate, say a finished face exterior wall is you'd need to, need to build a little mini algorithm that checks um, which inward facing direction the curve should be referencing. And if it's not pointing the right way, you'd need to reverse the curves that aren't pointing the way that you want. Uh, one way you could do this for cores is you could generate a patch surface for the cores by joining all the curves as two surfaces and probably getting the centroid, um, so the absolute centroid, and finding which side of each curve uh, that centroid sits on. And then you could use that to assess the curves that are facing the wrong way. Now, I'm not, I'm not gonna go that far with this workflow. 
Um, and if the, that didn't make any sense to you at all, feel free to email me and I'll give you like some little pointers of how you could do this. But I didn't want to spend too much time um, generating that little workflow because it is quite complex, but it is possible. But in this case, we can generate those shaft walls at least on their center. So it's a starting point. So now you can see we have our shaft walls coming in from test fit. But like I said, see the center line is, is on the edge of the slab, so it's not quite right. Um, but, but there's possible ways to work around it. So finally, I was also going to look at balcony walls. So in this case, I've obtained the balcony walls as parts. Um, I've also taken the start point of the balcony curves and found their Z value. Um, and in this case, I'm using this to group by key. So now I'm breaking down my balcony walls by the level that they occur at. So if we go to there and you'll see the keys actually match up to the levels that we're using. So in this case, we can just keep that order in the same order as our Revit levels. So now we know which levels those balconies need to be generated at. Now in this case, I'm just taking the polycurve curves and I'm just flattening them down so that each level's curves sit at their own respective sublist. And I'm going to be using a node from the Genius Loci package. Um, in this case, the wall by curve and level. The reason I'm using this node is because it does allow you to set an unconnected height instead of two levels. Um, you could also just use some set parameter by name nodes in order to set a wall's connection uh, to unconnected. In this case, I found this was easier and quicker. So if I unfreeze this, now I did try making finish face interior justified balcony walls. This is where the curve um, normal direction becomes obvious as a problem, but I'll generate them anyway. And this should generate all my balcony walls. And in this case, um, I believe, I believe that it looks like the finish face interior relationship may not have even, even technically worked um, because it's still generating them on the center it's just changing the justification of the wall itself. Um, so you may need to actually offset the location curve of the walls um, when you're gen generating the walls themselves. Um, so it, it might be even more complicated than what I said before. Um, but at the very least, we do visually at least have our balconies available um, as walls. So from a distance, you wouldn't really know that you're looking at something that doesn't work, um, I guess, if you're just trying to go for something conceptual in Revit. I can also maybe just change my graphic display options to smooth lines with anti-aliasing and also maybe chuck on ambient shadows so it looks a bit, a bit nicer. Cool. But now we've got core walls, we have balcony walls. Note that the floors um, obviously aren't trimmed around the core walls. So there may be some other things you might want to do with that as well, maybe shaft openings or, or floor openings. Um, but for now, I'm just going to ignore that. So the last thing I was going to do in this workflow is generate just the rest of the walls. Now you could generate each respective set of walls separately, because there are quite a lot of wall types that TestFit has. For example, the walls around the amenity spaces, um, the garage walls, uh, also the unit walls themselves inside the wall, the common walls or the, the walls, the party walls between the units, and also the facade. So there's a lot of types of walls you can deal with separately. In this case, I've just taken them all and joined them in a big list. I'm then basically just checking the Z value of each one. So again, I'm just finding the ones um, that occur at certain levels by using a group by key function. And then I'm just taking these and generating walls at curve and levels. Now in this case, I've got the start levels, just as my list of levels that I've drawn upon from back here. But what I'm also doing is just dropping the first item. And this is gonna be the level above because I'm dropping ground level and now level one is the same index as the ground floor in the list of levels. So this lets me create a start and end level relationship at the same indices in a list. So what I'm doing is taking my start levels, my end levels, and my wall types, and then my list of curves uh, grouped. Um, so in this case, we have them all just basically sitting at the same level, but grouped by their elevation key. So in this case, we've got, uh, again, our levels essentially. And this should just generate the rest of the walls in our design. But again, they're all gonna be on their center line. So yeah, not, not always ideal, especially for the facade, but yeah, I guess at the least, we do at least have a conceptual framework in Revit now <clears throat> that we could begin to work with if we wanted to. Uh, but there, there's probably a need for finding those justification lines, a couple of walls when I unjoin, that's fine. But you can see now we do essentially have at least a starting point for a, a feasibility Revit model. And obviously what I've just done is repeatable. Um, so if I wanted to do this again with a new test fit model, this Dynamo script could handle it. In fact, I may even just try that. I haven't tested this, so it may go wrong, <laughs> but I guess we can try. 
So maybe instead I'll just go and muck around with my design a little bit. I'm just going to make the site a little bit bigger. I'm not necessarily making the site too smart. Uh, whoops, I meant to do this one. I haven't connected my site to my, my site boundaries to my building. So I do have to probably be careful. I might at the moment. I might just get rid of these roads so I can just focus on, on my site. But at the moment, I believe I'm probably... Oh, yeah, I just crashed test fit. <laughs> oh, that was good. <laughs> uh oh, looks like I just pushed it a little bit too far. I'll try, um, I'll try again, but it looks like I just crashed. Um, auto save, okay. Ah, oh, did I just crash again? Let's, um, let's not do the auto save. <laughs> okay, cool. I think I pushed, I just pushed it a little bit too hard by the looks of it. But if I do, maybe I, if I move my site this way, there we go. We can see it's starting to get a little bit more configurated. Cool, so let's um let's make this another study. You can export all the data you want to. Study two. All right, so in this case, I'm just going to close and I'm gonna create a new file in this case. So I'm gonna make new and I'm gonna use an Autodesk template. And in this case, I'm just gonna go in again and just delete level one. Um, I'll leave ground floor in there, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's gonna be called level one anyway, when I create my test fit study. But in this case, I'm just gonna try and run the script from start to finish in one run, just to prove that like it's a repeatable workflow. Okay, so I'm just gonna repath to my new test fit study. Study two. And I'll just try running this and see if I can get my get my test fit study in Revit without doing really any any extra work. Fingers crossed it works. Can't make wall. Uh, that's fine. We'll just um. Uh, looks like there's going to be some errors. See if it lets it finish. Ah, I forgot to set my units, of course, sorry. So that probably does highlight the importance of setting the units properly because in millimeters, some of those walls are very small. In meters, obviously, they're a lot more tolerable. So now this should hopefully work. But I think this should generate, and it, it should generate pretty quickly as well. That's the good thing. It's generating a lot of Revit elements, obviously. Um, so, you know, you would expect something like this shouldn't be too quick, but it's quicker than I expected. But fingers crossed, uh, no error system. So it's doing everything at once. It's doing the levels, the floors, the walls, the whole thing. I think it's almost done. Cool, a few things didn't join, that's fine. But there you go. Um, you can see that now I have my test fit study straight into Revit, um, so pretty quick. Um, obviously the topologic workflow could complement this quite well because there are some things that the test fit Dynamo package doesn't bring in um, as it stands right now, such as rooms or departments or windows, doors, so the, all those sort of detailed elements, um, some of which test fit does have, such as um, knowing what a room is, um, are currently not available um, as it stands, but topologic obviously has exposed ways that this can be done. Um, so I think it's a really interesting workflow and I think there's obviously a lot of things that can be done to build upon it. Um, I've really just started uh, showing how the package works, but there's obviously a lot more work needed um, to generate a, a seamless workflow, but the potential is definitely there. So hopefully that's an interesting uh, topic and sort of shows you some things that you might be able to explore, especially if you're already a test fit user. Um, but thanks for watching today and hopefully this helps. And just a reminder, you can contact TestFit if you're interested in finding out more about their product. And likewise, also Topologic um, are definitely worth checking out um, for both TestFit and also just for other general applications in Dynamo and beyond. So thanks for watching today. Um, I aim to make two videos uh, every week for a while and um, ho hope I'll see you in uh, future videos. Thanks, take care, bye. <laughs>